Today, we're going to be talking about some of the best legendary and epic commander pairs you can use in Rise of Kingdoms. What's going on, guys? Cheers. Honestly, I can't believe it's been like nine or 10 months since the last time I made one of these videos. It's been a long time. The game has changed a ton since then. I've learned a lot more about the game, and my opinion has changed a little bit on some of these commanders now the reason that i'm updating my list for legendary and epic pairs now is because lilith continues to change the way that immigration and migration works in rise of kingdoms and they continue to make it harder and harder for players to migrate back to a kbk2 kingdom for example and in that scenario epic commanders actually become a little bit better in kvk2 now i want to preface that by saying for free to play players and low spenders and new players to the game um, those are the players that this video is really meant for right if you are an older player or you're a whale and you're spending a ton of money um, most of the time you're going to be using legendary commanders okay i recommend that if you can make pairs of legendaries it's better to do that than to spread your legendaries out across a few different armies because if you have three or four different armies in the open field that are just sort of meh sort of average uh, you're going to be filling your hospital a lot faster especially as a free-to-play player or a new player who maybe isn't even t5 yet and the progression of your account to t5 is more important than field fighting with four you know sort of average commanders so i want to have that disclaimer that you should really only be using epic commanders in the open field if you don't really have a choice but to do so and really it should only be for uh you know up through kvk2 uh, once you get into kvk3 and especially in season of conquest like you really cannot use epic commanders in those kvks it's just you're you're just at such a disadvantage that uh you're just gonna get crushed you're just gonna get crushed and it's not gonna be a good experience now i do actually have one season of conquest pairing that you can sort of use in a really interesting scenario so make sure you stay till the end if you guys want to know a little bit more about that and real quick before we jump in if you guys aren't subbed i know a majority of you guys aren't um go ahead and click that sub button it really helps out the channel we just hit 30,000, so thank you guys so 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 much seriously sincerely thank you um and while you're down there drop a thumbs up on it it helps this video get into the algorithm all right so first things first what we have to do is sift through these commanders and determine which ones should we even be talking about right because not all legendary commanders are the same not all epic commanders are the same and so some of these commanders you're not even going to really want to use and just so we're clear this is for open field fighting and in some instances uh sunset canyon exclusively and i'll talk about which pairs are exclusively for sunset canyon but some of these commanders shouldn't really be used for either of them and by shouldn't be used i mean like you shouldn't invest in them like it's just it's so expensive right so um caesar and ragnar are sort of like maybe things you can use in sunset canyon um really nothing that you're going to use in uh, open field fighting same thing with mulan um unless mulan is expertise joan of arc is pretty much better than her in every way constantine i've really changed my opinion on he used to be a commander that i would recommend as a 5511 and if you have him there great i still use him in sunset canyon but i just don't really think he's that worth it because he just doesn't deal any damage he's just a punching bag and even if he brings along joan like is that really gonna make up for the fact that you're gonna have that whole army get melted probably not edward you should not be investing in just at all absolutely not uh Tamiris is an interesting little like secret sauce that you can throw into some things later down the line but should you focus on her early game no frederick same sort of thing maybe if you get lucky with gold keys you can use them in uh in your canyon team and con just no just don't use con at all pelagius i've really downgraded my opinion on pelagius um since the meta for the longest time has been um aoe in the open fields pelagius just doesn't really make the cut for me um matilda is definitely a tank you can use in your sunset canyon but other than that no um herman there's an interesting we'll talk about herman briefly briefly but otherwise no um Olgi, no uh Boudica, no and that is that okay uh also cpo we'll we'll put cpo down here uh, cpo i don't think you should ever use in the open field you can use him in sunset canyon and in fact he is actually really quite good in sunset canyon 
we'll talk about that maybe a little bit later uh but in open fields cpo in my opinion is an absolute no-go first thing i'm going to do is move i sit down here uh just so that way i can remind myself to talk about them later let's organize this by uh, troop type okay so this is going to be our infantry this is going to be cavalry archers mixed troops and then this is a specific pair for one specific scenario we'll talk about um I actually moved uh, Osman down here because he is part of the season of conquest pair that I'm going to talk about in a little bit but let's start with infantry because you're going to get Charles Martel for free over time now I know that since they continue to put new legendaries in the gold keys it becomes a little bit harder to get Charles Martel specifically um realistically you want him to be at least a 5511 to use him in the open field for fighting other players if you have that I think Charles Martel works really really well with Sun Tzu Sun Tzu gives you 10 percent of extra health you can find that on his third skill for infantry you also reduce damage taken but the big thing about Sun Tzu is that you have a five target aoe really nice damage factor with rage regeneration so what you're getting here is a little bit extra like a little bit extra tankiness for charles martel but really you're getting some aoe and some damage in there with rage gen which is really what charles needs charles doesn't deal that much damage on his own um obviously he's sort of like a tanky commander but his primary skill as a primary commander which is what you want to use here um and then for a majority of these i would say 95 percent of these um you're going to use the legendary as the primary okay you don't want people to know that your secondary is an epic because then they're going to swarm you down okay so charles martel primary what you're going to do here is when his active skill goes off you get 30 percent increased damage and then during that time period you're going to have sun tzu fire off his aoe so that's really nice there's nice synergy here uh and you're just dealing some nice damage for a, a relatively tanky march which is nice now we can also talk about bjorn as well which wasn't in the game back when i made my previous video the thing about bjorn is that uh you know unlike sun tzu he doesn't deal aoe um, but he does apply a little bit of a debuff to nearby enemies which is nice it makes them take an extra 15 percent skill damage the downside of a martel bjorn is that you're really like aside from the 10 percent chance of getting skill damage on uh bjorn skill i think it's his fourth skill there's no skill damage on this combination at all so really you yourself are not going to gain too much benefit from that debuff uh with this combination however um you are dealing that single target damage factor with bjorn so that's a little bit of an extra damage um for charles martel you're debuffing you're getting an extra 10 percent of defense and attack from bjorn um and so overall this i think is a very solid combination if we're talking about richard richard is a great pair for joan of arc um Joan of Arc is a very obviously supportive commander everybody knows that the thing about Joan of Arc is that you want to keep her alive as long as possible she is AoE buffing everybody okay um not just your marches but everybody around you this is extremely useful if you're, if you are a free to play or low spender because now you're helping out your team your whales nearby you are getting this really nice buff from your march which is great also you get 25 percent increased normal attack damage which is really the only thing that Richard does is normal attack damage so essentially with this pair um it's you can expect to apply that debuff on Richard's primary skill and Richard's healing is going to sort of keep Joan alive a little bit longer so this pair is not going to deal a ton of damage okay it's really not it's a supportive tanky pair hopefully you can fly under the radar a little bit so you can sort of support everybody else on the open field with that being said you could also do like a Bjorn Richard or a um a Sun Tzu Richard as well those are totally possible but I'm thinking if you have both of these um available to you I would say Sun Tzu is better with Martel Joan is better with Richard finally talking about Alexander um Alexander you should definitely expertise in my opinion as any sort of player he's just such a good commander especially in KVK two and three he's just like undefeated in those KVKs super super good for an Alexander um legendary you really you know if you've maxed Alexander you've probably maxed Yi Song Ye and Alex Yi Song Ye is a great combination however if that's not the case let's say you skipped Esong and you're gonna build an epic pair with Alexander uh Sun Tzu is your guy he's your guy um he's got the AoE he's got the rage generation and Alex could to can do the rest basically you're also getting a little bit of tankiness from Sun Tzu onto your Alex the extra health is really nice the damage taken reduction is really nice overall this is a very solid pair I mean AoE is the only thing that Alex doesn't do so realistically like he's this is great 
um, but it is still pretty squishy so you got to be really careful with that and that's pretty much it these are some pairs you can do for infantry if you're looking to add a legendary and epic together let's talk about cavalry okay so Cao Cao is in the same boat as Martel you can get him over time he's not as good as Martel um, he does serve a specific role of killing uh, gatherers out in the open field so if the enemy is asleep and they send out gatherers into a territory that you have access to then great news you can murder them with Cao Cao and with Belisarius I think that practice is a bit more rare these days I think players tend to not gather when there's enemy presence around um, I think that's something that happened a lot more frequently in Civil Wars and also in earlier KVKs when players just didn't really know what was going on but regardless if you do see an opportunity to kill gatherers in the open field this is going to be the pair you're going to want to use you've got the mobility tree with either of them you could use whichever one obviously Belisarius primary is going to be cheaper to get you're going to use purple stars to get him there you're going to use less experience to get him there than Cao Cao so that's preferable but realistically having a legendary primary is always better because you sort of blend in in those big murder ball group fights and you can sort of hopefully not get targeted as much whereas if you have a purple commander everybody knows oh my god kill the pur purple commander with that being said Minamoto is interesting obviously in this video we're talking about free to play and low spenders some of you may have a 5511 Minamoto or maybe even expertise to Minamoto now that there is a relic in the game that makes Minamoto a little bit more viable and relevant that relic only applies to season of conquest but um it maybe it incentivize some players to purchase him and if that's the case then I think Minamoto is a great pairing with buy bars now previously I had talked about um Pelagius as a pair for Minamoto I've since changed my opinion about these this this combination and the reason for that is literally just the AoE on buy bars it's just it it's just a really powerful AoE and because the meta has been AoE in the open field for so long um Minamoto does not have AoE right and so by bar sort of makes up for that uh what's lacking on Minamoto by adding a really powerful AoE on that secondary commander um you also get obviously 20 percent increased attack which is it's fine I wish it were like health or something like that but it's okay um and you're also slowing them down with this active skill too so you're like really keeping targets nearby so that way you and your allies can swarm them down and having Minamoto primary is giving you the skill tree uh which is really nice I love the skill tree for this combination um you get that extra rage regeneration from the skill tree and so overall I would say if you have Minamoto and you're looking to pair him with an epic um I would say that by bars is probably your best bet at this point there's some things Pelagius does better than by bars but like as a whole if you're just looking for straight up value damage output like by bars is probably going to be your go-to secondary finally we have Saladin now Saladin is the best commander here in this tier he just is um he's very good in in uh, even in season of conquest you see Saladin right he's a very good legendary commander especially considering that you can keep him at five 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 one and he's basically as effective as he would be expertise right so that's where he's such a high value commander and with his with his nice single target damage factor and he's a little bit tanky as well which is beautiful he's got the support tree so he's gaining a lot of extra rage um, on that support tree which is great you can pair him with by bars and that would be a great pair again same sort of thing with Minamoto he's just adding a high damage AoE to an otherwise solid primary commander that's really what you're going to want to do here um, I think that's sort of your best bet now obviously another combination that's really popular and I know this is two legendaries but um having your your Saladin with Ethel Flood secondary is extremely common and very good you, you get that extra AoE there's a lot to love about this pair obviously again this is not an epic but Ethel Flood you know just even though she uses more experience like a legendary and she uses gold stars like a legendary she is somebody you get for free over time so in in a way she is someone all of you are going to have access to at some point as an expertise so yeah I think that it's worth at least mentioning that so keep that in mind but regardless by bars I favor more than Pelagius now than I did before another thing that we can talk about which is not really that intuitive is Sun Tzu so a uh, salad and Sun Tzu is definitely a combination you can consider Sun Tzu obviously is an infantry commander uh the thing about Sun Tzu though like I said before he gets 10 percent infantry health but everything else on his kit is all just straight up universal right he's dealing AoE he's got a rage regeneration he's boosting the skill damage on Saladin's primary skill and he's a little bit tanky with Saladin as well he reduces the damage Saladin takes by 10 percent 
so realistically i mean this is a really solid pair uh, there's obviously you would do solid and primary full cavalry build right that would be the strategy here uh but overall like you're you're doing a lot with this pair and i really like it i really do like it a lot um realistically you probably want to save your sun Tzu for an infantry march just so you get the full value out of the health there but um if you wanted to do this I, I see no reason why this isn't a perfectly viable march moving on to archers now archers become really powerful in season of conquest but earlier on in the game it's really expensive to invest in them and they don't have that many great options you have el cid which we can talk about in a second uh you also have edward and smyris which is fine but edward just after kvk2 man he falls off hard like super hard really no good use for him but you do have ysg and ysg is you know he is the number one commander to expertise for a reason um the downside is that kiera while she is very powerful it takes a very long time for you to get her expertise which is super annoying uh and kusunoki is just so squishy with isong that i just can't really recommend this pair in the open field but what i can say is that a kusunoki primary uh ysg secondary is a good pair in sunset canyon for your back row so kusunoki he's going to remove all the debuffs and then on the turn afterwards isong is going to hit with their massive aoe which is really really nice you're getting some nice stats here for the archers with your isong a um, you're getting some damage over time from kusunoki which is nice he's got the skill tree so you're not missing out on anything by him being a primary and uh, overall again kusunoki with ysg great for sunset canyon a little bit too squishy in my opinion for open field fighting but you guys could give it a try uh, eventually you could try a uh, ysg primary kiara secondary kiara does have a nice bump in skill damage on her last skill she's got a really solid uh, aoe for an epic commander i mean realistically it's 1400 damage factor for three enemies like that's really nice it's really nice for an epic she is getting 20 percent of archer stats as well the, again the problem with kiera is you it just takes so long to get her so that's sort of the downside with her um that's all i have to say for epic or i'm sorry for archers um other than the fact that you could do like an ethel fled isong Ye um that's a pair that you could you could certainly do again this is two legendaries um but there's a ton of aoe here the downside being that it's extremely squishy and it will be targeted immediately so just keep that in mind you could also do similar to what i said before um with saladin you could do a uh isong a sun Tzu, and there's just a ton of aoe skill damage here insane but the problem is you know it's gonna be it's gonna be melted as well so consider that um but not something i would seriously recommend really the only thing we're talking about here is canyon unfortunately now i do want to briefly talk about herman and el cid because they've been sitting down here for a while the entirety of the video the only time you would want to use them is if you're poking out of your city and you want to basically prevent your enemy from dealing skill damage for three seconds uh that's sort of the uniqueness of that uh that pairing is that you know with herman he has a two second silence so they can't deal skill damage during those two seconds and then by the time that's up you're actually getting hit by el cid's one second disable which prevents active skills and normal attacks uh during that one second that also means they're not getting a rage that second as well so it's nice it's a three second chain is it that useful no it's it's not um but you know hey if one of your friends is new york city and they're getting just completely swarmed down maybe you can support them by preventing one army from dealing a ton of skill damage temporarily um so that's an interesting combo it's all single target damage factor i don't know i don't love it the good thing about el cid is that he does have a 10 percent chance of popping off a nice skill damage which is cool and you do get some use out of that by poking out of your city and hitting enemies but overall not a super viable pair in my opinion finally we're going to talk about these uh these universal commanders now Mehmed is one of those commanders where I do not recommend that you invest in him unless you get really lucky with gold keys and 5511 you're good to go Mehmed is insane in Sunset Canyon for his AoE he boosts skill damage there's a lot to love about Mehmed as a commander that you can get for free which is nice you can use Sun Tzu with Ethel Fled great combination tons of AoE uh same thing with Mehmed and Sun Tzu this is a definitely a good AoE open field combination um keep in mind these there's not that much stats on these pairs 
so you will probably get melted okay so you have to be very careful using these combinations but it is something where if you can pull it off you can deal a lot of damage with aoe in the open field so it's definitely something that is uh is worth noting absolutely um you also same thing could consider bjorn as well if you wanted to do a primarily uh infantry build Bjorn obviously doesn't have AOE that these two commanders do, um, but he does, you know, he's a little bit tanky. He's got infantry. There's some nice little debuffs he's got there, um, making everyone take more skill damage. So something to consider. Is it the greatest thing in the world? No, I wouldn't say so, but definitely something you could try. You could also pair these two together if you wanted a double legendary combination that's sort of similar to a legendary epic. Just tons of AOE here if you wanted to do that. Now, those are the majority of the marches, right? That's pretty much it. But I do want to talk a little bit more about Sunset Canyon. So I did mention before, um, obviously, Matilda is sort of a tank you can use in Sunset Canyon full siege, which is insane. So that's one thing to keep in mind with Matilda. You also can use uh, CPO as a really tanky march in Sunset Canyon. Uh, CPO you can pair with either Charles Martel or with your um, Richard. These are going to be just really, really tanky pairs. CPO with Sunset Canyon bringing 10% more troops is a big deal in Canyon. Uh, and that's what makes him really good in the open field that just means that more of your troops are going to be sent to the hospital so yeah that's why cpo is great in canyon horrible in open field fighting um definitely something to consider same thing sort of with uh with osman here 10 percent more troops is really really good to go now i did say that i was going to bring out a, a single season of conquest pairing you could try and that would be a herald primary osman secondary now the reason that this pair has such good synergy is because it's mainly for popping out of your city and dealing insane amounts of damage and then retreating now of course this isn't exclusive to Harold Osman right you could do like a Harold El Cid or something along those lines or a Harold uh you know Alexander for example but the reason that this combination has so much synergy is because Harold has a 20 percent chance to cast their active skill which is really really good what does that mean for Osman well the good thing about Osman where is he um the good thing about Osman is that he actually deals bonus damage when an active skill goes off that's going to be called sword of osman so basically any time that harold's skill prox his active skill prox you're going to get an additional 400 damage factor on top of that and if you've ever seen harold in the open field he is pumping out his active skill damage i actually have a battle report uh right here where i tested this out um on just a random you know random enemy turn two uh, I, I immediately it activated it triggered right away and I got to you know prove my theory and you just you can see um when you go through here how often you have that active skill popping it's like pop 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 pop, pop. it's like it's like popcorn over here right uh and so when you have when you're constantly having Harold pop his active skill dealing that damage and then on the second turn you're also getting the bonus from Osman it really adds up over time and the benefit again is that if you are just popping out of your city you hit them and not only are you hitting them with with Harold's active skill but it's a little bit better because Osman is behind him, which is nice, right? So again, I don't think you should open field fight with Harold Osman. Uh, you're gonna get swarmed down. It's not not a great strategy. Uh, but in that specific scenario, I think it's something that you could try. Again, is this exclusive to Osman? No. You could do Harold Alexander. You could do Harold El Cid. Things like that. Um, but again, it's if you don't have those combinations this is something you could try if you want just some quick burst damage all right guys if you made it all the way to the end of the video hopefully you will drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it of course if you're new here subscribe to the channel and click that bell to be notified the next time that i upload a rise of kingdoms video comment down below your favorite legendary and epic pairs in rise of kingdoms and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace